What is up, everybody? This is your host, Jacob, with my co-host, Dakota Major, a.k.a. Mississippi Strongest Catfish. We're here today with our friends, Willie B. Taylor and uh, Josh Mason, a.k.a. The Shit King. We have just got back from the, was this the third? Third, yeah. Yep. Third annual um, Bigfoot Birthday Bash here in Natchez, Mississippi. We're coming to you live from the Natchez Grand Hotel. Super stoked, uh, Dakota. Tell them about your two victories today. Well, today has been a very interesting day. Very interesting. I mean, besides all the alcohol I've consumed today, I have won. I, I didn't win just one first place today. Technically, I've won two. So early this morning, about 1130, uh, they were having a Bigfoot calling competition. And well, being the nerdy kind of guy I am, I, I've studied, and I'm, I'm a believer in Bigfoot, you know, fucking sue me, but I won first place in the Bigfoot calling competition, so technically, I am the best Bigfoot caller in Mississippi right now, don't get me wrong, the woman I was going against, she, she did pretty decently, I mean, it wasn't, it wouldn't call a Bigfoot to the dinner table, but it would, it, it, it'd do something, but that's not the only thing I'm proud of today. No, well, the most exciting one's the squirrel hunt. Yes. Uh, so they had an auction. They were auctioning off stuff. Uh, they were trying to raise money. I'm not exactly sure what they're trying to raise money for. Uh, I'm not sure if any of us really. Do you know, Jacob? Uh, it's some charity. They they said it at first. I can't remember what it was. It was some well, charity. We were too drunk. We just wanted to spend money, basically. But uh, I bid 35 Dollars on a bag from uh, what, what bank is it? H and R Block. Yeah, it's just H and R Block. Oh, it's just H and R Block. Well, that's who does my taxes anyway. So you know, <laughs> shout out to H and R Block. Uh, they were sponsoring this. Uh, but what I won, it was a drawing. It was six bags, and I ended up winning an all-paid trip to Louisiana for a squirrel hunt with professional squirrel dogs. I know y'all y'all talking about what what I've never heard of a squirrel dog. You see duck dogs, but they're professional uh squirrel dogs. And I get to stay at the hotel and the man whose property and the hotel will be saying that is, from what I understand, his uh story is loosely based off of Top Gun. No, Top, Top Gun's Gun based is loosely on based him. off his story. Yeah. Top Gun is loosely based off his story. There we go. What's his name, George? I, it's, I've lost it. I can't remember. You can't remember? We'll probably, I'll end up probably putting his name in the comments. Either way, last weekend in February, the boys are going squirrel hunting yes. in Louisiana. And y'all will hear everything about that because that is interesting. So two times they have won something, and I usually don't win anything. I'm usually a loser, as y'all can tell in my fucking uh, powerlifting and uh, strongman career. Strong it's either second or last place. But right now, today, I might as well go to the casino. Which we, we, we might tonight. We, we actually might. Which me me and George, we still, we, we can't go to the casino too late because, George, you know where we're going? Yeah, Big, Bigfoot Symposium. We're going to the Bigfoot Symposium. They are going to speak with like-minded individuals about Bigfoot. Brad and I being the two non-believers in the group, we are going. Brad, have you decided where we're going for dinner? I don't know. There's too many good places here in Natchez to eat. There Somewhere is. bougie. Somewhere, Somewhere bougie. bougie. Yeah. And you know what? They ain't wrong about that because everywhere we ate today, pretty good. And you know they're making a pretty they're, they're making a pretty penny up here, but it's all really good. Besides, we ate breakfast this morning. I'm not gonna say where we ate breakfast at this morning, but the eggs I got them I got them fried like and runny. You know the taste of it was funny. It was funky eggs Benedict for me. It, yeah. it, it, and the coffee tastes like dog farts. <laughs> well, you, see, you gotta remember you're in Mississippi, so eggs Benedict just may not be a wise choice no matter where in Mississippi you we're, are. We're in Natchez. This place used but, to be French. Yeah, Spanish. Uh, just, there's just it, some things I wouldn't really order. Oh, well. It, it, it's been all decently. I've had an amazing time at Natchez. Jacob, 
You've had an amazing time in Natchez. I've had a fantastic time in Natchez. I think that the, it all culminated really for me with, and the night's still young, but it all culminated for me with the squirrel trip. Dakota and I came in, we both bit on a bag, and the idea was that surely if two of us got a bag, now Josh got outbid. A lot. A lot, Ooh, yeah. yeah a lot. The, on the last three bags, I, I got the first bag, Dakota got the second, and on that third through uh, sixth bag, they just were throwing money at it and i think i heard 80 i mean they, they were charging over a hundred dollars in the bag there's like knickknacks from h&r block it's really just you're bidding on the trip and uh, it, it wasn't worth more than that than the 30 dollars yeah, i think but the, the trip is worth a lifetime yeah i mean i'm really excited about the trip yeah so that was really the culmination of the and of the, the way trip. that trip happened it was magical but it was absolutely magical all right so they they were drawing numbers they drew the first one. Jacob, being the loser he is. <laughs> Got eliminated second round. Second round. And then there was a couple that we met up that we talked. I talked to them and everything. And Super they, cool couple. They are very amazing. They bought three bags. So, you know, they rolling in the dough, you know, like making pizza kind of dough. <laughs> they got pulled out the second round. The third round come around. Uh, there was another dude. He was from Baton Rouge. I'm not exactly sure what his name. I didn't talk to him much. He was a really nice guy, though. Old Miss fan, hotty toddy. Yeah. Living in Louisiana, and he's an old Miss fan. That is very awesome. Living in Baton Rouge. Bat he lives in Baton Rouge. As an old Miss fan. An old Miss fan. That is very awkward. He he makes a lot of people mad. He got out. He was a little upset because I think he paid what he paid the most for his bag. He paid the most for his bag. It was pretty high. Yeah. It was. It, it was. It was. It was. It, but all the money's going to a good place, even though we don't know where exactly it's going to. And these go toward our bar tabs. <laughs> yeah, probably tonight. You know, we well right now we we're, we're pretty deep. Uh, and the last two, the the couple, the wonderful couple that were bought three bags, they were out. That last one, I was number five. They had number four. They picked the 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 woman picked a person out of the audience to come pull the number. It was a, it was a cute little girl. She came and pulled it out. The sunlight the sunlight was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. You could see through the the sunlight went through that cheap ass notebook paper they had. <laughs> and you could a, see a cinematic experience. <laughs> it, it, it was very cinematic. <laughs> It said number four, and they we were they were rooting that number five would be pulled, but number four got pulled. But they got invited to the trip. They as well. did. They're invited to the trip. So actually, I didn't just get a trip. I get to meet up with some people that I met here that are awesome. So that that's going it's, it's really going to be an interesting trip. That's going to be a televised hunt. It is yeah, a televised it, hunt. It, from as, as far as we understand, it's going to be televised. I don't know exactly what channel or anything. Probably um, some. <laughs> Backwoods, Louisiana, South Mississippi local channel. It, it, it'll be on some sports channel or something. That that it probably will boost our podcast a little bit. We'll probably get out there a little bit because you know we we talk about strength sports and stuff like that. But you know, really, the core of this podcast is us drinking and spitting the bull. And we will get the people on the on the on the hunt. On oh the podcast. no, no doubt. After the hunt, I mean, after we get done with the hunt and everything. Uh, we'll get them to talk with us and see. We'll, we'll, we'll get them good and drunk first, though, because you know we want them. We want them, we want them speaking the truth. A bunch of drunk Cajuns. Because right now we're idea. good and drunk. <laughs> well, ain't nothing like a good drunk Cajun. Oh, but it has been uh, Natchez. If you want to come on a vacation for one weekend, I, I I recommend it. I highly recommend it. It is nice. Uh, I don't. I haven't got out a lot here lately. But coming over here with my buddies, my best friends right now, besides Brad, no, I'm kidding. Well, I'm kidding. Oh, Brad, the, Brad, the, Brad, the shade, the shade. Brad's not staying with us, so you know. But no, he, he's probably going to be our DD for a little bit tonight. Oh, I got you. Until he got to go home and see to his pretty ass wife. Yeah, to the symposium. Uh, it's been really wonderful. So now let's get on what our podcast is really about. To the strength world, you know, this, tomorrow – Come hell or high water, we are starting our uh, training for the Red Brick, Red Brick Rumble. Rumble. So, uh, are we starting? Did we decide to move legs around and maybe start with some chest work? Well, we talked about it. I think tomorrow we are going to do uh, some form of bench. And then, you know, bench accessories, because I really think as much as we're drinking today, 
our livers are not going to be prepared for uh, squats. So I think Monday is going to be a better squat day for us. Well, I was thinking just the, the, the car ride alone is hard on, on yeah. your knees as far as, you know, the, the squats. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to do a primary bench day and then follow that up with some – Shoulder work and the shoulder work will, you know, everything's high reps right now. We're in the hypertrophy that, phase. That is, that is right. Uh, my least favorite because it feels like cardio to me, it really does. But well, sets know, of eight, really, this, yeah, sets it, of eight it, is brutal. But you know what? That's how you make that's how you get stronger. Just ask Ronnie Coleman or any other guy that uh does strength sports Lightweight or bodybuilder. Yeah, <laughs> like these two guys we got right here as our guests today, they're not weightlifters. Only thing they're used to lifting is beer. <laughs> Or, well, not old, old Brad over here. I hadn't done 16-ounce curls in quite a while. And yeah. yeah. He's our uh, he's the preacher of the group. He can lift a mean cup of coffee. Yeah, he has been putting down the coffee for the ride home. Now, I, I, I did get into the gym for about six, seven months. Loved every minute of it. It was very therapeutic. And I, would, I hate that I had to stop going. But, well, I say had to stop going. I worked a job. I just didn't have the time. And I've been wanting to get back in it. Almost every day for like the last three years. So hopefully, we'll plan on getting him back. The podcast is inspiring him to get back into it. Speaking of inspiring Brad, Brad and I have been kind of bonding over a book. So I came down. I took all of Friday off. The boys all had to work Friday. I had a annual fiscal, so I just went ahead and took the full day off. I got the uh, Screw Tape Letters. It's a book by C.S. Lewis. And so far, it has been phenomenal. I think it's going to work its way through the little group here. Um, essentially, it is a book from a demon writing letters to, I guess, a senior demon writing letters to lesser demons. And it's essentially just a commentary on Christianity, and it's um, it's really good. It's actually, for those of you who don't know, C.S. Lewis wrote... Um, Chronicles of Darnie, a great uh, Christian writer from the late 1800s, early 1900s. Just a great guy. And it, I mean, it really it holds up today. Um, all the commentary he's made through the book as far as what we need to do as Christian men is, I mean, really, it, it, it's, it's held true. Now, we're well, speaking of books, Jacob. Let's give a shout out to this local writer. What's his name? Uh, Josh, reach behind you and grab the grab the bag. Let's, yeah. uh, I, I did, or is it behind you, Dakota? It, it's, 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 I think it's right there. We uh we didn't just buy the bag; they had a big auction, so it's behind you, Dakota. Reach me. up there, yeah. Well, we uh Jacob, being the guy he is, he decided he wants to invest his money into a local writer over here, and that's he is a local. How, how do you say it? He is a local author. Let me see. You hand me the book, and I'll I'll look through. He he signed it. His name is Robert Hargan. Robert is a young guy. Robert is only thirty two years old. A local writer living in Natchez, and this is his book, Bad Moon. Apparently, he has five books. This is book one of the Wolfheart series. And the mention, he had to go to his publisher and rush. What was it, five copies today? Yes. For the right. auction. And uh, apparently Natchez, uh, Natchez being big in the filmmaking nowadays, going to try to do a small little series about the book. Yeah, that, that's what they're they going to make a film on it. So I, I'm very excited. I think he may be my Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening read, and um, I'll be sure once I've read the book to touch base with y'all and that may be another one that circulates its way through once you get the friend group. On, once you get hooked on that one jacob you're gonna buy his whole series ain't you well just knowing the guy so I, I was able to have a drink with him this afternoon and chat with him and he's super nice guy somebody we might need to get on the podcast it, it's possible. this sounds like more my kind of read than it is yours this is more, bit, bit fancy kind of but, like, I, I imagine but it's I a lot love more fantasy. stuff like this it, was like it makes an urban fantasy, which is one of my favorite genres. Who doesn't love a good fantasy read, though? Honestly. Well, my kind of fantasy is different than y'all. <laughs> no, well, we're not talking about this. This is a PG-13 podcast. Yeah, what's this? The, the, the cover on this is awesome. It you know, does, the cover, the cover looks does. more like, uh, so it's got a wolf. It's a wolf yin yang symbol, where each symbol is a wolf head eating either a sun or a moon. It oh, kind of wow. looks like a, um, what is it? Is it the Alaskan, uh, is it the Inuit? tribe um it looks more like something from them it's not really a natchez mississippi looking thing well uh it's norse that's oh so it's norse it's not the inuit that i'm thinking well, look of. you kind of took the you know y'all seen that yin yang uh, mm -hmm. two circles chasing each other 
It's that, but each circle is like a wolf head. I wonder who he got to do the artwork for that. I mean, it is really... Yeah, I'd like to know. That'd be cool. Speaking of artwork, for our listeners, Dakota and I are looking for intro music. Yeah. Um, I've been told that my intro was rather bland and not grandois enough. So... If anybody is a local musician, a Mississippi musician is what we're looking for, who would like to pick a song, sing a song, anything like that to I mean, be an could, intro. You, you could probably talk and be a little bit better than this boring fuck. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, it, it, I, I could, I could, I could definitely put a group to sleep. Um, you know, be sure to comment, let us know. We would love for you to do an intro song. That's something we're looking for. I'm looking at Brad. Brad and I have been writing music together for how long? Over 10 oh, years yeah, now. Probably 12 years. I was just thinking, you know, we should get together and write something. Yeah, I, uh, I think that would work. For those who good. don't know, Brad and I are very prone to splitting a bottle of good whiskey and writing country music and blues music. Uh, that may be something we do. That may be something we, we do a live show one time on the podcast and maybe just pick a few songs, and Brad, for those who don't know, can play every instrument under the sun. Really? Well, I I played the saxophone for nine years, and I've picked around on the guitar for longer than that. I, I can't really say I'm jammed up at anything, because I just I didn't have time to practice like I should, and, you know, good discipline practice is what it takes. You know, like, I hate the word talent, because, you know, raw talent's not what it's all about. But, but he has it. Cool. He has a substantial amount of raw talent. Uh, my, well, in my opinion... No one has raw talent. They build it over time. Because no one's perfect when they're born. They're only perfect when they put time into it. Yeah. Everybody's a loser when they're born. I don't know. I, I've remained I a was loser. A, I, well, yeah, <laughs> you're still a loser, Jacob. What are you talking about? Uh, but, well, let's get into it. You want to talk about what we've been drinking tonight? Yes. We have been. What was the name of that bar we were at? It was so great. Rabbit something... Rabbit hole. Rabbit, rabbit hole. hole. The rabbit hole. So we're staying at the Natchez Grand. Josh and I talked about it. We said, what is the most convenient hotel to everything in Natchez? And the Natchez Grand certainly was. It's walking distance to everything. It's surprisingly it's like everything. not that expensive. And it's been a lifesaver, um, really, for us. Because, you know... We don't need DUI. I mean, you're a lawyer, but still. I mean, but, but and we're, we're fat, so long walks weren't gonna well, work. Well, down down that hill we went earlier. Where was that food? Yeah. Where was that restaurant? Oh, we the had? camp. The camp. Yeah, that was yeah. down on that. I, I'm, under the hill. I'll go ahead and tell you that was absolutely freaking delicious. But the walk back up, a half mile straight up. All four of us were having freaking heart attack. My chest got tight. <laughs> My sinuses went up. I thought I was gonna die. I really did thought. I really did thought I was gonna die. Like the grease bad. and beer did not work well yeah. for you. <laughs> no, but not but, at all. but back, back, bouncing back to the rabbit hole. So the rabbit hole um, is right next to the Natchez Grand. Phenomenal bar. Excellent staff. We um, I've been sipping Shippas and um, Shippas Twelve. You can't have any scotches under twelve. Any whiskey under twelve years old is just not worth having. With a uh, soda water, Dakota. What have you been having? Well, I've had a bunch of stuff over there. Uh, the first thing I had there, Coco Loco. That was good. It's blue. No, no, no. That's not blue. It was more of a pale orange. The red one. What was the well, blue yeah, one? The blue one, that would have been their, it was crazy tea or something like that. The I electric pre- tea. Electric tea. I prefer the Coco Loco myself because it had more of, you know, it had more fruitier tones to it and stuff. And I really just, I, I like, I'm a big coconut guy. Going to Coconut, the other thing I had over there, and I made this, this is my signature drink for now <laughs> on, because I'm a big Red Bull guy. It was Red Bull. I'm not exactly sure the brand coconut rum they had there, but they got the Red Bull, mixed it with coconut rum, and it tasted just like the uh, Cocoa Berry Red Bull that you can get at any convenience store in America. You should be able to. If not, that convenience store is ran by communists. But <laughs> it was really good. Uh, the last thing I had when I went out there... Irish co- Your very first Irish uh, it coffee. It was my first Irish coffee, and I really liked it. It was really strong, though. Uh, I had a lot of Irish cream put in mine, like, to where, like, a normal person would probably pass out. Me, not so much. It was really good, though. Uh, I feel like I have enough caffeine to, you know, take on the nightlife in Natchez tonight. Brad, you and I were drinking a substantial amount of community coffee. Um, yeah. 
You know, community's actually local. Um, is it South Mississippi or is it uh, Louisiana that they're out of? I can't remember. But it is a, technically it's a local coffee. Um, and we've, we've had several cups of community coffee this evening. Really good. Is that the coffee they use for my Irish? Um, yeah. yeah. It, it is. It is. It, it's real bold. Yeah, they have the dark roast. Like it, it, it punches. It, it punches me in the face. Like it's like if you're, you know, butt naked and you have the cold. <laughs> you have, well, I'm gonna cut you off there. We don't need to go any farther. Uh, never mind, guys. You don't want to hear this. Holes, let's not go down that way. Yes, go down yeah, right Josh, right? what did you have, my friend? Uh, I was drinking mainly beer. I was having a mango cart beer. It was like a mango wheat ale. It was I, actually I, pretty good. I had that one the other night. It is. Really amazing craft beer. It's kind of funky. I, I don't really usually like fruity uh, beers, but that was actually pretty uh, bad. I, well, you got to think about mango. Mango does have a lot of fruit, like fruity tones to it, but it, it mellows out a little bit. Uh, the hop, you can really, you can taste the hops a good bit in there. It's like, it, it's the perfect mixture. If I, if I would put a fruit in a beer, it would be that mango. It's very mango forward, I, but it yeah. wasn't too sweet. I, I was really impressed with it. Usually, those fruity beers kind of make me nauseated. You know, it's just Same, too much. Yeah. But they that was very good. Um, well, I guess we're kind of nearing the end of the podcast. Yeah, uh, I would like we'll start with the guest and then wind up with us. Josh, tell us your favorite part of the weekend thus far. Uh, I just love hanging out with everybody. It's good to see you. Uh, all of us getting together. It's nice to meet new people, a little bit on the weird side. Very weird <laughs> Very indeed. Weird, yeah. Willie B, tell us, what's your favorite part of the day thus far? Man, I got a second what Josh just said, just being here with everybody, having a good time. Just, I mean, it's, just, it's been a heck of a couple weeks. So when Jake invited me to this, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I need a day like this. And it has been absolutely therapeutic. It's been a really good experience. I love Natchez. I come here at least once a year, and it's a great town, great people, great friendship. Forest Day Majeure, tell us. I really enjoyed this trip. Uh, I don't get out as often as what I should. And I'm working on it. Uh, so if any of the you know listeners want to invite us out to go somewhere, please. Or give us advice as to where to go. Yeah, that that that's just as wonderful. Uh, the 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 nightlife over here is decent. Uh, it doesn't seem like a very busy time of the year, so I can only imagine what it would be on a busy time of year. Uh, the scenery, perfect. I mean, we're right next. We're in this hotel right next to the uh, Mississippi River. You can, we can literally open up. Our we're, we're si- we can see the river from where we're sitting yeah, right yeah. now. Watch all the tugboats and everything go up and down. So that is absolutely beautiful. The bars. It is amazing. It's all walking distance from this hotel to the bars, so you don't have to worry about getting a DUI, and that's my advice. And friendly people, too. The, Very the friendly. Yeah. And it's not even just Natchez locals. I mean, we met, me me and Josh, we have met a lot of like-minded people that, you know, believe in Bigfoot, uh, investigate in it and everything, and that, that we're going to talk to them here in a little while when we go to the symposium, so it's going to be really great. Uh, it's just it, it's a really amazing vacation spot. It bring your for for families, next to none for families. It's so like it's just so family friendly over here. Your kids can literally just enjoy. Like, you know, you really can't enjoy a lot of places now these days because you got a lot of this you know evil going on. But you can bring your kids over here and enjoy it. Smell the clean Mississippi air. I don't know if there's anything clean about the Mississippi River. Well, it it, it smells wonderful. I woke up this morning, I got a big whiff, and it, it, better than drinking a Red Bull. And anyone who's big history nut, this is literally one of the oldest oh. towns on the Mississippi River. It might be the oldest. It is the oldest. It, 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 because it's so close to the river. And everything. You're talking about historical monuments everywhere. I'm amazed. Half the buildings you pass will have a historical significance in this town. Yeah, it, Even this hotel, I believe, has a good bit of history behind they, it. They do. I mean, you just stop and read the signs of some of these buildings. I mean, it is amazing. It, it's, just, it, it's a beautiful town right next to Louisiana. So, if, you know, on Sundays when you can't buy your liquor here, you just drive right across the bridge and you know what? Louisiana sells their whiskey on Sundays. At Walmart, Liquor. at Walmart, <laughs> around your kids, they don't care. 
they are good people. The Cajuns are wild. <laughs> they are. But I've really had a wonderful time here, and I'm hoping to keep our adventures going. I mean, it's just it, it's awesome being able to do all this and then letting everybody who live every uh, you know all our 13 listeners letting y'all know how we're doing and how it's going. <laughs> So I'm about to, I'm gonna turn it over to Jacob, and he's gonna tell you how he. You know, I think for me, um, not to sound like a broken record, it's really, I think a big part of anything in life, and that's been a goal this year for me. My wife and I started with our honeymoon, traveling to places we were uncomfortable going and going to places that are new to us. Now Natchez is nothing new to me. I, I, I've gone to Natchez frequently since I was a child, but I've. The spontaneity of it all, you know, going to a Bigfoot festival, taking a weekend out, uh, a day off work, and then taking a long weekend with your friends, that's really what it's about, because at the end of the day, you know, and I think that's what this podcast is about, you know, we talk about strength sports and life, and I think a big part of life is taking time to be with the people that you love and, and have these adventures, and it has been an adventure, I believe that it will continue to be an adventure, the night is very young, there is a lot of trouble we will probably get into. But oh, we might end up in jail tonight. I will not, but y'all I'm, might. Uh, I'm hoping. They got they got good meals in jail, dude. <laughs> I'll try to get you out of it. Uh, pack, the, pack the protein. I got a long road, so I'm probably going to hit the road after supper, but good luck to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we end our podcast, I know Jacob said he had a really good time here. You want to say anything else before I... Yeah, you know... Um, Highly recommend coming to the Bigfoot Festival. It's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, too, I, I've seen a lot of strong people. I have. They're very, they're, the trails, you can walk around here. You see a lot of athletes. You there do. are a lot of athletes here. And you I think talk, there are a lot of Mississippi and Louisiana athletes. You're talking about people who are probably in their 60s to 70s walking up and down these trails that we could barely walk when we were here. I mean, literally, that hill, we could barely walk it. There was a 70-year-old man. He had, well, I'm not going to, he was old. We can say that. He was pretty old. He was walking down and up that hill that we had trouble with, and he didn't even wipe the sweat off his head. With ease, and he had been pounding the heavy beers. More than likely. I mean, if you live in this town, you're you're probably drinking. Well, it's about time to go to the symposium. What do you want to close with? I'm going to close with this. Uh... I want to talk about some of the upcoming sport, I mean, strength sport things we have coming on. Absolutely. Uh, in December, we have Mississippi Strong is coming. And is Daniel happening. competing in that? Uh, I, I believe he is. He's planning on it. As long as work doesn't mess with him, he will be competing in the middleweight novice division. So, for those who don't know, Dakota's identical twin, Daniel, also competes in strongman. Now, Dakota competes in the heavyweight. He's weighing about 290 right now. No, I'm, I'm about, 285, well, 290. It after, varies. After tonight, it's going to be probably 290. But Daniel competes in the 231. Um, but they identical twins, like I said. Just one weighs a little more than the other. So, I'm very excited to see his performance in that. What else is coming up? Uh, we also have, uh, well, you know, we did that powerlift meet. There's that one in Hattiesburg coming up in February. John's what, competing in that. Yeah, what is the name of that powerlift man? Uh, I think it's Battle on the Backwater, if I Battle remember correctly. I, I can't remember. It's either Battle on the Backwater or it's, uh, I can't remember the other one. One's in Past Christian, one's in Hattiesburg. I can't remember which one is in February. But John's competing. John Daly, a freak of nature. So John started powerlifting at 48. John's presently 49, knocking on 50. He is, every time he competes, this will be his fourth meet, every time John competes, he breaks his own bench record. We're trying to, he's bench only right now. He competes in the 275. We want to give him the full. We meat. want to give him the full power. The full meat and potatoes of powerlifting. But the issue is, you know, he has some back injuries that are holding yeah. him back. John will be on the podcast soon. He is an if inspiration. If we can talk him into it. Oh, he will is. be. But he, he he's an inspiration, really, to all of us. And he's just one of the best people you could ever ask to meet such a great really guy. Nice guy uh we also have all right so you have mississippi strongest i know for a fact in april you i've talked about it, the red brick rumble which, which I, we are going to win we will absolutely win we will smash that competition if we don't have any you know pros which you, in mississippi strongest in the novice divisions uh that is offering up for every first place winner in the novice divisions in Mississippi, um, in Mississippi Strongest, they will win 
a free invitation to the Robert Rumble. Speaking of Zach, Zach's coming on the podcast soon, isn't he? Uh, I'm hoping it'll be here probably in the next week or two. Week or two, I'm hoping. Yeah. If he, you know, if his butterfly, his butterflies got to get out of his stomach first. Now he's talking about, I don't like talking in front of people. He's going to hear you saying this junk, you know. Probably. Zach, I, I, Zach, I, we're calling you out. You're washed up. You yeah, got you to gotta hop in here with the young guys. Dude. Hop in here, man. But he is a really great guy. Uh, he's, he, he has done collected what, I want to say at least five to six sponsors Already since, since our last podcast, yeah, in the last week he's he's really he's doing a lot for Mississippi strength sports. He is. Shout out to Zach, what a great guy! We can't wait to interview him. Well, look, it's time for the symposium. Well, before we lead off, if you're leading off. I also want to say he he has got plans cooking for the 2024 Mississippi Powerlifting Championship. As again, uh, the MASA Powerlifting Championships will be in September this year. So September 2024. Yep. And we want every anybody that listens to this podcast, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. Sign up for this competition. Come compete. I, we you don't have to win. It, nobody cares about the it's not the winning. I want people to put in their head. It is not about the winning in strength sports. It's about meeting people, having fun. And bettering yourself. Bettering yourself, getting stronger. That is all it's about. Because I'm weak I'm weak. I am for my weight group, I am weak. I just want like-minded people to come, compete, and have a good time like everybody else. And I'll be glad. And that's that's another thing. If you are looking at joining uh, MASA, whether it be in strongman or in um, powerlifting. Or high, they got the Highline. They have the Highline game. Or the, the, the one that shall not yeah. be speak the sports game. If you on. will comment or message us, I'll be glad to help coach you. I've got Matter a group fact, of guys that help coach. Matter of fact, we're going to put to their website – I'm putting it in our comments this time. We'll post the show in the show link. Yeah, we'll put it in there. Um, We do need to go. Thanks for listening. As always, comment. Uh, If you want to be on the podcast, let us know. Subscribe, comment, like it. Tell your mom, grandma, everybody at church. Tell everybody to listen to us. And all of us. Hey. As always. Stay stay strong. strong. Thank you all.